Here I want to show Fraser Optima Compact together with the 0 to 10 volt motoric actuator. In this case here we have our 53-1180 which is the modulating actuator with a 5.5 mm stroke. When we open up the box here we can see here on top of the lid we have the item code and also we have the codes for the wiring black, red and grey and here accordingly the black wire here which is the ground we have the red wire here which is the face and we have the grey wire here which is the input control signal 0 to 10 volt. When we want to open up the lid we use a screwdriver here put it in the groove and like this here and now we can remove the lid. We now see the internals here we have the dip switches for different settings that we will go through using the tech node. We also have a jumper here that can be set for different valve strokes. And we have the possibility to dismount the cable. We can press up the cable here and click here and remove the cable. We can put it back again, click it in and put the cable back in position here. So now we have a, the cable mounted again. We put on the lid again here, but before we do that, look inside the, the lid here. We also have the different positions here shown with the position for the jumper with a 2.5 mm stroke, 5 mm stroke, and for our case, it's put in the position where we have a 5.5 mm stroke. We also have the different dip switch settings, but we will use the tech node to go through that. So I will put on the lid again, click it on, and now it's assembled. When assembled with the valve, we remove the cap the valve and now we can by hand put it on turning the union until tight here and we can put the actuator in any position and when it's in the desired position just lock it by hand when looking at the the tack on the actuator we can see that don't use any tools for mounting, just do it by hand. Before putting on power to the actuator, the actuator must be mounted on the valve because when powering up, the actuator starts a calibration routine and if it's not mounted on the valve, it will go to a fully extended position and stop there. So always before putting on power, the actuator must be mounted on the valve. So let us look at the, at the tech node. What's in the tech node here? 
we can see that uh, here for our 0 to 10 volt actuator as I showed before the black wire is ground red face and the gray is the input signal 0 to 10 volt when looking at the next page in the tech note we can see what we also saw inside the lid but I think here it's a little more clear we have the dip switches 1 to 3 the dip switches decides what kind of input signal we are using the default the factory setting is the 0 to 10 volt so we have all the dip switches 1 to 3 in off position but we can change here by setting for instance the dip switch 1 to on we have a 0 to 5 volt input signal we can change here for 5 to 10 volt signal or we can change to 2 to 10 volt signal or 4 to 20 milliamp by using this position but, but the factory setting is for 0 to 10 volt the dip switch number four is for the direction of the, of the spindle and for our valve it's put in what is called reverse action. That means that a zero volt signal means that the stem in the, in the actuator is fully extra extracted pushing down the spindle on the valve and closing the valve. And a 10 volt signal means that the spindle is fully retracted up and opening up the valve fully. But it can be changed to the verse, to the what's called direct acting. But for a phase optimal compact valve, that's not the correct position. So factory setting is according to the optimal compact valve. With the dip switch number five, we can change the characteristic, the actuator characteristic from equal percentage to linear. The factory setting is equal percentage. So with the equal percentage actuator characteristic together with the valve, which is a linear characteristic on the valve, when we combine these two, the combined characteristic will be equal percentage suitable for, for instance, fan coils. But we could change if we needed it to be a linear characteristic, we could change by the dip switch 5 to a linear. So with a linear actuator characteristic together with the linear valve characteristic, the combined would be a linear characteristic we also have a dip switch number six, which can change the input signal from voltage, which is the default, to a milliamp signal. So this is done by the dip switch number six. And then we can see up here with this position that's also used for zero to 10 volt, for milliamp, it would be a zero to 20 milliamp signal here. And in this position here, which would be the 2 to 10 volt signal, that would be 4 to 20 milliamp when dip switch 6 was in the on position. And the last possibility we have is to change the jumper I showed before for the 531180. The factory setting is. 5.5 millimeter so the jumper will be in this here position but it could be changed if we had selected another valve and we had this type of actuator we could just change the stroke on the actuator by another position on the dip switch so the actuator is a very very flexible actuator that can operate with almost any kind of input signal, reverse or direct acting, equal or linear. So 
all in all a perfect match with the Optima Compact valve. To preset the valve, I can use the Fraser app. Press here. And now I can select Fraser Optima Compact here. I need to select the dimension here. And in our case, the valve dimension is a DN20 with a 5.5 millimeter stroke. So now I can select DN20, 5.5 millimeter. Now I insert the flow here, 0 0.3, and calculate. And now it tells me that I need to preset the valve to position 2.6. I need to have 25.5 kilopascal available when measuring the differential pressure across the valve. So now I can take the valve here. I can unlock the nut on top. I can preset to a position 2.6 and lock again. And now the flow to the valve is limited to 0 0.3 liters per second. When the actuator is mounted on the valve, we can now put on the power. When the power is put on, we will now see the red light flashing. And that means that now the actuator is calibrating to the valve. So now it will find the closing position of the valve and move to the position controlled by the input signal. So when this routine has finished, we will see a steady green light. The valve has now reached the end position finished calibration and now it's in the position indicated by the control signal. When the signal, the control signal is changing, the green light will be flashing a couple of times until it has reached the new position and then will be a steady green light again. Thank you.